Welcome to the email traffic video. Now, this is by far my favorite method because it is definitely the most, you know, you get the most targeted traffic to your squeeze page or your sales page. So this is by far my favorite and probably, you know, the easiest one, believe it or not, when it comes to sending a lot of targeted traffic to your website. So basically, we're going to be using email, obviously, and we're going to be taking advantage of other people's email list. Now, here's the basic sequence, you know, for someone's list. They they have a product or they have a blog or whatever it is, and they're building their email list, right? And when someone joins their email list, those people start getting an email sequence. They might receive an email once a day, once every other day, once a week, you know, whatever it is that they're opting into, that person has some kind of email sequence that they are putting that person through. And then those emails all promote something. They're sending, they're, they're sending the traffic to a squeeze page or they're sending it to a uh, sales page or they're sending it to their blog post or whatever it is. And that's the basic idea behind email sequences. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding people who have large email lists inside of our niche. We're going to be contacting them and we are going to be working with them so that they will place our email list or our email swipe inside of their email sequence okay so let's say they're sending out an email every other day we're going to slip in there and see if they'll send out our email on one of these days instead of their own email or if they don't have anything to send out they will be more willing to send out our email instead it's a really really simple but very very powerful method now of course i know what you're thinking you're saying hey you know one guy is sending out an email it's not going to do a lot for me well maybe not but if you have five, 10, 20 different guys sending out an email to your squeeze page or your sales page, that's a lot of people coming to your list. And that's the main goal. So how do we even find people that have a huge email list in our niche? Well, there's multiple ways, you know, product launches, there's always, you know, every niche has like, you know, people launching information products and things like that. So you can head over to like clickbank.com or JVZoo or Warrior Plus or any kind of you know network affiliate network and search for all the different products they offer especially clickbank they have you know products in every single niche so you can head over there and find all these people in your niche that have successful products contact these people and see what it would take for them to send out your email you can also find people who are doing webinars and reach out to them webinars are really hot right now a lot of people are doing webinars so we can reach out to them or you can find blogs or forums related to your niche and reach out to those people. And remember, we all, we're only trying to find people with large lists, okay? People with thousands and thousands of people that they can send to your squeeze page. All right, so how do you even get these people to email for you, right? So you found somebody, how do you get them to send your email? Well, for one, just be real, okay? Just be a real person. Don't come off as some kind of salesy, you know, pitchy guy. You're trying to hype them up and convince them to do something. Just be 100% real with them. Introduce yourself build a relationship, tell them who you are, and tell them what you have to offer. And make sure your offer is real, true value, okay? Don't grab some rehashed PLR product and try to pass that off as value. Have some real, true, original content that you created or that you had someone create for you, a professional, and say, hey, I have this content. I would love to work together to build my email list. And just be straight up and ask them, what will it take for them to send the email out for you, right? Just at what will it take? Ask them what they want in return. Do they want money? Do they want 100% commissions? Do they want some work done? What kind of partnership can you form with them? Everyone has different needs, okay? One person just might want some money, that's fine. One person might want a, some commission on your product. One person might want you to do some work for them in the future, it really depends. So just ask them what they want in exchange for them sending out an email for you. Maybe you need to tailor your content a little bit. Maybe you need to rebrand your content a little bit to match you know, their list or their style, and that's perfectly fine. If you need to integrate their brand with yours, then that's perfectly fine as well. If I'm working for a guy that works under a popular brand and he wants to mail out my product for him, I am more than happy to rebrand my product as if it's coming from his brand as well, right? So it's like we're a partner now. We're, we are partners in this product and he's gonna mail it out and I'm gonna build my list. Okay, so like I said, this is probably the simplest method that there is in all of these different traffic videos, but it is definitely the most effective and you can get the quickest results by using this method. And there's not much to it. Find people in your niche, blogs, product creators, webinars, forums, anyone in your niche, reach out to them and ask them what it would take to have them email for you 
and even give them an email swipe so they don't have to do anything. They just got to copy and paste it. Already have the email swipe written out that you want them to send out so they don't have to do any work at all and they are going to be more open to emailing your product. Hello and welcome to the Facebook traffic video. Now during this video, of course, we're going to be talking about a little strategy that I use to drive tons of traffic to my website using Facebook ads. Now, first off, let's quickly cover why I use Facebook ads and why you need to be using Facebook ads as well. And this is probably my favorite source of traffic currently than anywhere else on the internet right now. Now, for one, Facebook ads is just a gold mine right now. Facebook ads is just like Google AdWords was about 10 years ago, okay? It's popular, it's huge, and it's still kind of new, okay? Facebook isn't 100% Facebook hasn't 100% figured out the advertising platform yet. As you know, if you're you know, familiar with Facebook ads, it's definitely changed a lot over the past few years, and it's going to keep changing. All right, what the main difference is between like Facebook and Google AdWords is, for one, Facebook, you can do a lot better targeting. Okay, We can get really detailed with who we target on Facebook and some things that we can't do on Google AdWords, for example. Also, Facebook is a lot more lenient with their rules. You know, with Facebook, we can link directly to affiliate offers or a bunch of different pages that we can't really do with Google AdWords. AdWords has a very strict linking policy. They really hate affiliates. They really hate like all these salesy types of videos and things like that. And Facebook, you know, really lets us get away with all of that stuff, which allows us to drive traffic anywhere we want without having any issues, except for minor issues, of course, like gambling and things like that. Facebook does not approve that. And of course, Facebook has, you know, more than a billion users. So no matter what your niche is or what your target is, there is an audience for on Facebook that you can target and you can get clicks for as low as pennies or sometimes even less than pennies if you know what you're doing. Now, Facebook does have a lot of different types of ads and different types of bidding and strategies that you can use when creating your ad. For example, they have like ads and the whole point of this is to build up your fan page and get likes for your fan page. You can do lead ads where the whole point is for you to get a lead and this is what we're going to be focusing on by driving traffic to our squeeze page and focusing on getting leads. And the last strategy is a sales type strategy where you're going to send traffic to a product launch or some kind of sales page trying to make the sale. Facebook also offers cost per click or CPM, which is cost per impression. So what that means is cost per click is you are going to pay every time someone clicks on your ad. No matter what they do on the other end, you're gonna pay when they click on your ad. A CPM or a cost per impression means you are going to pay a flat amount per 1,000 impressions. So no matter if no one clicks on your ad or if all 1,000 people click on your ad, you are going to pay one small fee per every 1,000 impressions. Also, there are two types of placement for your ads. You have right-hand side ads and newsfeed ads. Right-hand side ads are usually better for the like type ads when you're trying to build your fan pages up. If you're just trying to get some name recognition and you want people to see your face or see your brand name, that's kind of ideal for that. Not too effective when you're trying to build an email list or make sales. That's where we use the newsfeed ad. These are perfect for you know squeeze pages and sales pages. You're trying to sell a product, whether you're a vendor or an affiliate, the click-through rate is always much, much higher on the newsfeed because we have bigger images and we are right there in the middle of their Facebook. And that's what we're gonna be using with our strategy is a newsfeed ad. Now, the whole point of this strategy is very, very simple. We are going to be setting up newsfeed ads that redirect to our squeeze page. Okay, that's the main point of this video. And this is how I build my list and add thousands of subscribers to my email list every single month. Okay, we're going to create simple ads, redirect them to our squeeze page. All right, so you're going to need a squeeze page for this strategy to work. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Here I am on Facebook right now. And as you can see, we have all these different objectives that we can choose for building our Facebook ad. Now, what we want to do is what I recommend and what I do is I send people to your website. All right, this is pretty straightforward. This means when someone clicks on your ad, they are going to be redirected to your website. 
So once you click on this here, it's going to pop up and it's going to ask you to enter the URL that you want to promote. And this is going to be your squeeze page. So type out your squeeze page here. And once you get your squeeze page URL entered there, you are going to see that we now have all these different options for creating our ad. Now, first up, we need to choose our audience. Now, if you aren't sure who your audience is, no problem at all. We're going to figure that out. And that's also the point of these ads is we're going to do a lot of testing and find out which audience is converting the best for us. Okay. So for one, for locations, you know, we need our location, we need age, we need gender. So for example, let's say that I have a squeeze page in the weight loss niche for women. Okay. I am promoting a product that is directed towards women in the weight loss niche. Okay, so I know for a fact for gender, I want women, all right? But maybe I'm not sure on the countries or the age or anything like that. So what we can do is we can head over to alexa.com and we can post any website that is related to our niche. So for example, women's health mag is big in women's health and fitness and things like that. So I pasted their URL in alexa.com and it's going to come back and give me some information about this website. So as we can see, who visits this website the most? We can see for one female, majority is female, which I already expected that. We can see that the majority has some college or some college. They browse from their home. And we can see that the most visited by country is United States and India, but mainly just the United States with over 50% of the visitors. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. I am going to keep mine on women. I'm going to keep it on just the United States for now. And for the ages, I'll keep it at 18. And I'm going to change 65 plus to, let's try around 50. All right, we'll, we'll test that out there. Now, the big thing here is the interest. Who are we going to target? Who is interested in our weight loss product? Well, I can start it off by doing just some broad interest. You know, I can choose weight loss, for example, because that's who I'm targeting. If you know of anybody in your niche that is big, for example, you can target people. Like if I was targeting basketball players, I could target LeBron James. If I was targeting internet marketing people, I could target Frank Kern. So off the top of my head, I don't know anyone who is big in the weight loss niche. But once you type out the first one, as we can see my weight loss, they're going to start giving you recommendations here. So I can do, you know, dieting. I could do physical exercise and i can just choose all these different interests that are related to the people that i am targeting and on the right hand side here we can see that we have around 24 million people who fit all of this different criteria okay so scrolling down a little bit further here how much do you want to spend per day now this is completely up to you but let me go ahead and point out that it doesn't matter how much money you have you know spending $500 a day is not going to change anything and it's not going to make your ad do any better. Okay. I always recommend five to 10 to $15 per day. I don't recommend starting off with $20 plus because it's really not going to make a difference. Okay. We're going to be split testing different ads anyways. So all those different $5 ads are going to add up anyways. If you're looking to spend that much money, don't come in here and drop a hundred dollars per day because it's not going to make any difference. So I like to test with five or $10 per day just to see how my ad is converting. That's more than enough money to see how your ads converting. So I'm going to keep that at $5 per day. And when we scroll down a little bit more, we can actually create our ad. All right. So first off, we need an image. Now I actually had a little image created for this weight loss squeeze page. So let me go ahead and load that up here by clicking on this plus symbol. All right, there we go. Now we can see we have our little ad created here. Now for your image here, what I recommend, you know, there are some things that you can try to catch people's attention because, you know, when people are browsing through their newsfeed, they're seeing all these different images and you kind of have to think outside of the box and really create something that's different and captures their attention. I recommend having, you know, some kind of bright border around your image or some kind of bright background or like, you know, a play button using weird font using someone's face or someone's body, you know, something that stands out and always have some sort of call to action. Okay. I just grabbed a random image here. I wouldn't really use this image. Probably not. It has no border. It doesn't really have a call to action. Although we can use the buttons down here as a call to action, but we'll come back to that here in a second. Now, if you aren't really good with graphics, you can head over to fiverr.com. You can have an awesome newsfeed graphic created for you for $5. All I did was search Facebook newsfeed ad, 
and we can see that we have all these different people that can create an image for us for just five dollars so you can you can head over there don't think too much about it just spend five dollars and have your image created now all we want to focus on is the news feed ad the desktop news feed okay for the mobile news feed you can keep that up if you wanted to for the right column we're going to remove that and i'm actually going to remove you know what we'll keep mobile feed actually we'll keep that up as well so we're going to go with the desktop and the mobile news feed get rid of right column because we don't want to promote that at all we are looking to build our list now for the headline you know whatever it is you're promoting you want to have a headline obviously that goes along with that promotion so i could do something like how to lose 25 pounds because that's what the image says 25 pounds in only two weeks and then for my text i could say something like tired of those love handles click here to learn how i lost 25 pounds in only two weeks and that's going to appear there now when you do run a desktop newsfeed ad you do have to choose a fan page now when they click this ad it's still going to redirect to your squeeze page or whatever website you entered up here but we still have to enter a fan page because it's going to be sponsored from that fan page so you can just click this plus sign right here to create a new one if you don't already have one and you basically just have to enter a name for it and that's it that's what i did here i just entered how to lose weight fast and that's all you have to do for that there now for the call to action i do recommend using this i like to use the download button here and as you can see it will put a button there if you're sending people to a squeeze page and wanting them to opt in for a download, you know, choose download, of course. If you're sending people to, you know, a sales page, do like, you know, shop now or your sign up or whatever it is. Or if you're just going to send them to like an article or something like that, you know, choose learn more. Choose whichever call to action just, you know, complements the offer that you are promoting. So I'm going to choose download now. If we show the advanced options here, we can also give a description below or a headline here. As we can see like that if you want to add more text to try to get your viewers to go ahead and click through and go to your squeeze page so i'll keep it like that there now here's the real secret and here's how to really drill this down and get the most out of these ads if we scroll back up here you're going to notice that we selected all these different interests right we selected three for this example but for you you might have nine ten you know 20 different interests what i like to do is i like to create one ad per interest so that I can test out the different interests and see which one is converting the best. Because if I run one ad here with these three different interests and I'm getting, you know, all these people opting in each and every day, all those different people might actually be opting in. They might only be fans of weight loss. And I don't know that, right? I could get 100 clicks from people who are dieting fans. I could get 100 clicks from people who are into physical exercise and 100 clicks into people who are into weight loss. And all of the people that opt into my squeeze page could all be from weight loss, and I'm just wasting money by advertising to the dieting people and the physical exercise people. So what I would do is I would close out of these right here, for example, and with this ad, I would just focus on weight loss. So I would scroll down, I would place my order, and then when you place your order, it says, would you like to create another ad just like this? So you're gonna click on that button, and when you do, it's gonna give you all this exact same details, right? Everything's gonna be exactly the same. And when you do that, you're gonna come in here, you're gonna get rid of weight loss, and this time you're going to focus on dieting, for example. Then you're gonna place your ad for this one, you're gonna create another similar ad, and you're gonna swap out dieting for something else, okay? So you have all these ads that are exactly the same, except each one has a different interest and this way you can focus on each individual one and see which one is converting the best and stop advertising on the ones that aren't converting the best okay that's just how simple it is to drive traffic to your squeeze page using facebook and building your list just focus on your interest see which one is converting the best and then you can expand on that and stop wasting your money and advertising to the other ones Hey, welcome to the forum traffic video. Now with this video, we're going to be talking about using forums to drive traffic to your squeeze page or your sales page or whatever it may be. Now forums, they have been around forever. And no matter what your niche is, I guarantee that there is an active community based around that niche and it, it being a forum. And what we're going to do is we're going to find these forums. We're going to reach out to these forums and strike up a deal and advertise with these forums. Now, this isn't your other strategy of, you know, you know, making threads and posting and, 
and waiting forever and having to reply to people and giving value and you know posting a hundred times a day so that you're you're active and then waiting for this waiting for that this is not that okay that that takes forever it, you know, it might work but it takes forever and we're not really looking for that we're looking to advertise right away and start seeing results right away so what we're going to be doing is we're going to find you know targeted niche forms related to our niche we're going to pinpoint who the moderators are who the administrators are you know the owner of the form we're going to contact these people one-on-one -on -one and see what kind of deal that we can work out, how we can advertise on their form. There's many ways that we can advertise on these different forms. Now, like I said, there are forms in every niche, right? No matter what your niche is, there's gonna be a community for that niche, right? So basically what we're looking for, we're looking for forms that are active, okay? We want people, we want them to be active. If they're dead, there's no visitors, there's no point in advertising. We want forms that are active, getting daily posts, all kinds of threads, all kinds of replies, things like that. Ideally, I like to look for five to ten thousand plus members on the form. If there's less than that, you know, it's not that active. So I like to really target, you know, forms that have, you know, at least five thousand people or more. We also need to be able to identify who the administrators are and who the moderators are. We have to reach out to these people, contact these people to try to work out some kind of agreement. So we have to be able to identify who they are, make sure that they are actually a part of their form. So here I am right now on the warrior form which is the most popular internet marketing form on the internet. And what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna show you what we're gonna be looking for on our forms, okay? For one, let's talk about how it, you know, being active. As we can see, if I scroll down here to the bottom, we can see that right now there are over 13,000 people that are active on the website. That is outstanding. We can see there's 886,000 people. Now this is most likely the biggest form on the internet. So the forms that you find for your niche aren't going to be anywhere near that most likely if they are that's great but most likely they're not going to be that high so obviously this meets our criteria for an active form with you know over 13,000 active people next up we can hop into their main form here and we can see you know all these different threads that have been posted today so today is january 9th you can see all these threads were actually posted today onto the second page you can see all the different replies if we head back here to the main page here, you know, over 2 million posts. So like I said, this is a very, you know, broad example because this is probably the most popular form on the internet, but I'm just trying to give an example of what active looks like. Now let's talk about the types of deals that we can strike up with forms. Now, many forms have different types of ways they make money. Not all forms send out, you know, regularly scheduled emails to their, you know, form members. So that's the first way that we could you know, monetize with the form. We could have them send out an email to their subscribers, you know, an email for us, a promotional email to our squeeze page or our sales page. Also, you notice we have a banner slot up here. We have this banner ticking, so this form here offers banner advertising. If we jump into this form here, we can see the sticky section. The sticky section is definitely prime real estate on any form because stickies have been proven to get you know a lot more visibility obviously because they are stickied to the top of the form so they are going to get all the eyeballs when someone visits the form as we can see here these uh new stickies here have you know 111,000 views 103,000 views almost 100,000 views while all of these other threads you know all I, all I see is one of them two of them even broke a thousand views you know they all have you know less than a thousand while these have a hundred thousand plus because these are sticky posts and everyone views the sticky post okay another prime spot for advertising if we click on this thread here is your signature if we scroll down here we can see this gentleman here has links in his signature most likely to his squeeze pages or his sales pages and that's another great spot where you can advertise. You can advertise in someone else's signature as well. So what types of deals can you strike up with a form when you find one? Well, for one, you can have some kind of white label version of your product. So for example, if I have a traffic product, I can kind of you know rebrand that traffic product as if the form itself has created that product. And if you do something like that, the form is more likely to promote it for you if it looks like it's coming from the form. So I can rebrand my product as if it came from the warrior form, talk to the moderator and get him to mail it out as if the warrior form created it. I could also give him 100% commissions because all I'm looking to do is build my squeeze page or, or build my list, excuse me. All I'm looking to do is build my email list. So I give him this product, I rebrand it. So like the warrior form created it and I say, hey, mail this out to your email list or hey, put up 
some banner ads for me for free, mail it out to your email list, make it a sticky post. You keep 100% of the profits. All I'm looking to do is build my email list, right? You do something like that, which I've done before, and it works out great because the Warrior form, or any form for that matter, they don't have to do anything, right? They're making 100% profits on your entire funnel, and you're building your email list. It's a win-win situation. Some other things you could look into is maybe becoming a moderator of that form if you're looking to be more serious about it or if you're more dedicated or passionate about that niche, you could actually become a moderator or even in extreme cases, you could look out, you know, look into actually buying the form. I mean, the Warrior form recently sold not too long ago to a new owner. So if you're like definitely into that niche deep, you know, that's your passion, you're, you know, really into that niche, you could look into buying popular forms and turn those into your own traffic machines. But that's definitely only for, you know, serious mode if you're, you know, got a lot of money and you're really into it. If not, just find related niche forms contact the moderators and the administrators, the owners of the form, and see what kind of deal we could work out, okay? So how do we find these forms? Well, the best way that I like to do it is I like to head over to Google, and you are going to type in your keyword plus form. So for example, I could say, you know, maybe I'm in a weight loss niche, I could say weight loss form, for example, and then I am going to receive all these different forms that are in the weight loss niche. So what I do, for example, is this first one here is the weight loss form. I'm going to open this up in a new tab. We're going to kind of check out this form, see if it's active, see if it meets our criteria for being something, you know, worthwhile. I mean, as we can see, it was number one on the search results uh, right away. I noticed they have a fan page. They're advertising with over 7,000 likes. So that's pretty cool. I see we have a lot of posts here, 60,000 posts. 1,200, you know, over 7,000, 27,000, almost 20,000, 40,000. So this is all great news so far. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here and see if they tell us how many members they have. We can see they have over 53,000 members, almost 54,000, almost 800,000 posts. So this is all good news. I'm going to open up this top form here. We can see a bunch of posts today here, a bunch of posts within the last few days. So this form looks like it's getting a lot of action. I'm going to scroll through here and see what kind of types of forms they have. They have weight loss programs with almost 13,000 posts. So that's great. That lets me know that people are looking to lose weight. Weight loss exercises with almost 20, you know, with 22,000 posts. So that's that's really great. A lot of people are active talking about weight loss exercises. So if I had a product that was weight loss training, this is going to be a great form to reach out and see if they want to work out some kind of deal, some kind of advertisement, some kind of partnership. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. Usually at the very bottom, they have some kind of contact us form. We can see here, contact us. I'm going to click on that. And we can see that it brings us to a form here. They want our name, email address, our subject, and our message here. So I'm going to fill this out. I'm going to leave a message that says, hey, you know, I am so-and-so. I, I, you know, I work in the weight loss industry. You know, I would love to reach out about, you know, some kind of partnership. Try to reach out and see if they have a Skype or a Facebook that you can talk to them through. It's a lot better than filling out forms, asking for Skype information or Facebook information or, you know, a personal email so you can have some kind of direct line of communication. You know, get an introduction from the administrator, you know, introduce yourself. It's all about building your relationship with the form owner, okay? And be ready to give away, you know, 100% commissions of your product, okay? And it must be high value, you know, very valuable product. Don't contact forums with, you know, crappy products that, that's not valuable for their members because they're going to blow you off and they're going to, you know, most likely they communicate with other related forums and they're going to let other forums know about you, okay? So only contact them with high valuable content and products. Be ready to give 100% of the commissions away in return for building your email list. That's the main goal is to build your email list while also building a relationship with the form, okay? So I would contact them, I would go back to our Google results here, and I would bring up these other forms as well and contact them if they meet our criteria and be ready to kind of rebrand your product to different ways with uh, the form's name, their brand, so they can advertise it as their own brand. You know, you have banner ads, you have, you can, they can email their list, they can give you sticky posts, signature slots, advertisement, things like that. A really great and cheap way, or even a free way, if they're going to accept 100% commissions, to build your email list using niche forms. During this video, I'm going to be talking about how we can use Pinterest to really drive a lot of traffic 
to our websites and our squeeze pages and things using what they call boards, okay? Now, real quick, let's go ahead and go over Pinterest and what it is and why you need to be using it. First of all, it's a social network that basically is a bunch of virtual bulletin boards, all right? They have something that they call pinning, and it's almost like when you like something on Facebook. You go around the internet, if you see something you like, you pin it, all right? And it kind of saves it to a board, which is basically a gallery of a certain subject. So the whole idea of the website is, it's a bunch of different boards, which are basically just categories, and people can pin stuff to that board, which again is basically them just saving things to that category. And people can go on the website and they can follow boards, and that means they will receive you know, notifications whenever someone posts something to that board, or they can follow profiles and they will get notifications and see whatever that person posts, no matter what board it is, all right? So here I am on Pinterest right now, and as we can see, it's kind of, you know, it looks kind of cluttered, and we have all these different images. Now, again, actually, people, what they pin, people usually pin images the most, all right? You can pin, like, websites, you can pin images, you know, you can pin links, videos, whatever. Images is usually what people pin the most, as we can see. And I actually follow a few different boards. As we can see, I follow a board called Luxury Cars. And all these different, you know, fancy looking cars you see on my board right now is from that board. I follow, you know, funny pictures. I follow technology and things like that. And as we can see, it is a bunch of different images mainly that are, you know, it covers my board. And if I was to follow your board, for example, I would see whatever you post on your board here. So the strategy that we're going to use is we're going to create our own board that is related to our niche. And inside of that board, we're going to be pinning our squeeze pages and any other information that we want to pin that kind of directly relates back to our website. And then we're going to spread the word of that board around to related websites and things like that so that we can grow our followers. And it's almost like you're building a list of people, all right? So real quick, to kind of show you what the boards look like, I'm going to hop in here to the luxury cars, and this is what an individual board looks like. This is the luxury cars board. We can see that they have 1 million followers, and we kind of scroll down here, and we can see all the different posts that the luxury cars board is making, which it is all just images of these different cars. Now, the great thing is, when I click on an image here, it's going to pop up like this here. I can repin it to my board if I wanted to. And then when I actually click on the image again, it's going to redirect me to the website where that image came from. Pretty cool, right? And it actually looks like this website is kind of using the method that I'm talking about right now because this is actually a website where you book flights. So what they do is they post this cool little image here. People are going to click on it because they want to see more images like this. And it's going to redirect them to this website. And now they have jet radar in the back of their mind when they are looking to book a flight from somewhere all right that's kind of what we're doing here because when someone's going to click on our images or whatever it is that we post to our board and they're going to click on the image for more information they're going to be redirected to our squeeze page or our sales page or our blog or whatever it is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on my name up here i just created this profile here for the sake of this video i'm going to click on create a board here and we need to give it a name. So let's say I'm trying to create a board that teaches people, you know, how to drive traffic to your website. Right? The whole idea is, you know, for internet marketers who are looking to drive traffic. So I could name it something like best strategies for driving traffic to your website. In the description, I could say something more like all the different methods and strategies that I use to drive traffic to my website. And for a category, I will choose education, I suppose. If this was some kind of local things some kind of local business i would add the map like a google map it's not though so i'm not going to add that and i do not want to keep it secret because i want people to follow me so i'm going to create that board and now we have this board here where we can start pinning our things now like i said people love images so the first thing i could do is i would head over to google for example and start finding images related to traffic like infographics that i could pin to my board so here I am on Google and I went to website traffic infographic and we're going to pin some of these graphics to our board. Now when you go to Pinterest and you sign up, they are going to um, offer you the opportunity to go ahead and add a little uh, icon up here on your Google Chrome or your Firefox 
and it's called Pin It, and it's going to make it just you know a lot easier to pin stuff to your board from all these different websites. So I went ahead and I installed that. Now basically what I want to do is I want to open some of these links up and I want to find some infographics that I could pin to my board that kind of gets, you know, gets the party started. I have some information there. I have some valuable information so people, you know, can see that and they will follow my board because they know that I share valuable information. So I'm going to open these two links up here. I'm going to open this up. We can see that we have this cool image here. So I'm going to click on the, my pin option up here, my pin it. And it's going to automatically uh, pull the images that are on that page. So we can see we have it pulled the image twice. So I'm going to click on pin it here. And it's going to pop up with this little board here. I can choose which board I want to pin it to. So I'm going to pin it to my best strategies for driving traffic. And then we can add a description. So I'm going to say how to drive thousands of visitors to your website using Twitter. Hashtag Twitter traffic. Hashtag drive traffic. Hashtag website traffic. Now, this is one of the most important things when sharing things to your board. You want to have a nice, clear description of what it is, and you want to make use of hashtags, okay? Hashtags are a popular way that people use to find different things on Pinterest. So if someone is looking for infographics on how to drive traffic, make sure that you kind of include that into the hashtag something that they might search, okay? So if someone's looking to drive traffic and they search Pinterest, they might search, you know, website traffic or drive traffic or, you know, if they're looking to use Twitter, Twitter traffic. And this is going to pop up. They're going to see my anchor infographic. They're going to like it and they're going to follow my board. Okay, so we're going to pin this just like that there. And now when we head back to my board here and I refresh it, we're going to see that I now have this image here inside of my board. Okay, now opposed to, you know, actually posting all these different infographics and images and articles and things like that. We want to make sure that we pin our squeeze pages as well. All right, so let's say I had all my different, you know, images posted here, and now I'm ready to kind of share my free report. I have a or a video course or my free report on how to drive a lot of traffic to your website, and I'm looking, to, you know, to kind of put that up on my board so it gets some, you know, get some attention and get some traction. So here I am on um, a demo, you know, kind of little sales page squeeze page here from uh, lead pages. But let's say this was my squeeze page and I wanted to pin this to my board. Well, to actually just to pin a website here, I'm on my squeeze page here. Let's say this is it. I'm going to click on the pin it button up here again. And as we can see, it kind of pops up here and it's going to pin my actual website link. Okay. Now, if you have any images on that website, like an ebook cover on your squeeze page, it will show that image here instead of this image that you see here. Okay. So what I can say is, Click here to learn how I drove 14,395 visitors to my blog in two weeks. And then I put my hashtags in there again to kind of make sure people can find this information if they're searching on Pinterest. So I'm going to pin it just like that. This window is going to pop up again, just kind of confirm what we typed out. We're going to choose the board that we want to pin it to. And then we're going to click on pin it. I'm going to head back over here. I'm going to refresh my board here. And now we have this one here. So when people are on our board, they're going to see our images. They're going to see this here that says, you know, hey, click here to learn how I drove all these visitors. They're going to click on it. It's going to pop up. They're going to click on it again, and it's going to redirect them to our squeeze page that we just got done pinning. Okay, pretty awesome, right? So let's go back here. So we're going to make sure that we fill this board up with images and all the different links to our squeeze pages. You don't have to have just one here. We can have all kinds of different squeeze pages here or sales pages or your blogs or anything like that. And now we need to kind of, you know, spread the word about our new board that we have here and get people to start following us. Well, the first thing that we can do is we can head up to the search bar and we can search for related types of boards that, and, and people that are related to our niche and we can follow them. And most likely they're going to follow us in return. Okay. So I'm going to go up here to the search bar. And I'm going to search, you know, let's try website traffic at first and see what happens. So the first thing we're going to see here is all the different pins that are related to website traffic. Now, this is also another great way that you can find images and things like that to kind of repin to your board. So, for example, increase traffic to website. We see this infographic here. I can actually click on the pin it button here and just go ahead and pin it directly to my board as well. That's another way that we can kind of build up our board. But what I'm going to click on is, first of all, I'm going to go to boards up here. And I want to follow people and boards that are kind of related to my board. Okay. So for example, increase website traffic. We can see they have 13 pins, you know, website traffic, they have 48 pins. So I can follow them. For example, easy ways to build website traffic. I can follow them. They have 30 pins, 
free website traffic, 268 pins, follow them, and kind of just go through here and follow all the different boards that are related to your niche that have a lot of pins. Now, next, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of be like the, you know, the YouTube method that we did and that we're going to follow and find people in, you know, niche related blogs or forums or people who have websites that we could reach out to. And we are going to ask them if we can place our pin, our board, our Pinterest board on their website. Now, if you have a blog yourself, you definitely want to post your Pinterest board on your blog. Okay. That is one of the most important things that we can do. We can post it, you know, be, you know, below our articles on our blog or on our sidebar. And we also want to reach out to people who have related blogs that we can reach out to and, you know, may pay them in exchange for them placing our board on their blog as well. All right. So how do we do that? How do we, you know, place our board? Well, when we are viewing our board, like I am here, we are going to click on the little three buttons over here, the three little dots, and we're going to go to make a widget. And we can see that it gives us an HTML code here, and we can see what the widget looks like. And this is it's going to show all of our different pins that we have here, and people can click on them individually and visit our website, or they can click on C on Pinterest, and it's going to redirect them to our full page here, where they can follow us, follow our board, and stay in touch. Okay, so we're going to give that HTML code to our partners or other people that will advertise it on their blog. Now, obviously, other people do not have to have your board on their blog for you to get traffic, that's just one of the ways to really explode and get a lot of traffic to your to your board here and get a lot of followers. But just keeping up to date and staying active and consistent and sharing images and articles and your websites on your board is gonna allow you to start to aggregate and get a lot of followers automatically through Pinterest because a lot of people do browse Pinterest and actively search for new boards to follow. So be consistent, hire a virtual assistant if you need to, to just repin a few things each and every day from related boards. Make sure that you have your websites and your squeeze pages added to your board as well. Make sure you add the widget to your blog and any related blogs. And you are going to start to see a lot of passive traffic heading your way just from Pinterest. Welcome to the YouTube traffic video. Now during this video, I'm going to be discussing a cool little method and strategy that I use to drive all kinds of targeted traffic to my website using YouTube. Okay, now this doesn't involve creating any videos or any complex situations, and we're actually going to take advantage of everyone else's hard work. All right, this method works extremely well, and I am sure that you're absolutely going to love it. Okay, now first of all, why even bother with YouTube? Well, YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world just behind Google. They have over 1 billion unique visitors per month, which is a lot of traffic. Over 100 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every single minute. And more importantly, there are all kinds of people, an insane large amount of people that have absolutely no marketing skills like we do, but their videos are highly ranked and they are getting a lot of visibility a lot of views and they're just not taking advantage of it and that's okay because we are going to reach out to them and take advantage of those views for them now basically the method consists of this we are going to find videos that have a lot of views but the video creator is not taking advantage of those views we are going to reach out we are going to offer them some kind of currency you know some money or some kind of you know some kind of partnership in return they're going to place our link our website link in their description okay pretty simple i know it sounds simple it sounds kind of like common sense that someone would have a website link in their description but believe it or not you know it's common sense for us because we are marketers but it is not common for people who are not marketers they just have the video up they're getting all kinds of views and they're just excited because they're getting all those views all right so when we come to them and offer them some money to put a link in their description, it's usually a no brainer for them because they're like, hey, awesome. Yes, I will accept your money just to put a link in my description. Absolutely no problem. Okay, so they're gonna put a link in their description and it's a win-win situation. So what we are looking for is videos in your niche, obviously related to your product, your squeeze page. I like to target videos that are a little bit older that have at least 10 to 15,000 views. Okay, you want them to have some traffic and have some views. 
Obviously, they, we want them to have no link in their description. If they have a link in the description, it's pointless for us to reach out to them because they already know the value of marketing or someone else has already reached out to them. So we want to find someone that has at least 10 to 15,000 views. They have no link in their description and we want something that is trending upwards. So we're going to look at the video statistics and we want to find something that's actually getting views and is kind of going upwards instead of falling off or you know falling flat. That means the video is continuing to grow and it will be a very profitable investment for us to go ahead and reach out to them and offer them some money to put a link in their description. And then once we find one of these videos that meet our criteria, we want to reach out to them on YouTube or you know Facebook if their real name is on YouTube, maybe we can find them on Facebook. We want to send them a message and basically you're going to say, hey, I have an awesome website. I have a free course. I have a free report that your audience is going to absolutely love. So how about I give you 10 bucks or I give you 20 bucks or I give you 100 bucks and you put this link in your video description. Okay. Now the price that you offer obviously is going to depend on, you know, A, how many views they have and how many views they're getting. B, how, you know, important or targeted their keyword is. If this keyword is, you know, a very common keyword and they're ranking high and they're getting thousands of views per day, you are obviously going to want to offer a little bit more money than a video that's getting, you know, 10 or 20 views per day, you know, a long tail keyword. Okay. So that kind of depends on how popular and profitable the video is going to be. But you can just offer an amount for, you know, you can go monthly, you know, 20 bucks a month, put their link in the description. You can go yearly or maybe forever, you know, it's completely up to you. Just kind of discuss it and negotiate with the video creator until you guys, you know, meet at a means. Now, also, I just want to point out that this job here, this is perfect for, you know, your assistant. If you have a, you know, virtual assistant, this is perfect for you to kind of outsource it and just have them go out and find these videos for you and have them reach out to these people for you so that you can be getting your website link, you know, spread it out all over these different, you know, niche related videos without actually having to do any work. Now, let me go ahead and go in here and jump in here and show you how to actually find a video that meets this criteria. So for example, I like to go over to Google and I put how to change car oil and then it's going to be on web by default. I just went ahead and clicked on videos and it's going to give me all these different videos related to how to change your car oil. Now, let's say that I have, you know, some kind of mechanic report, you know, that I'm trying to build my list for. I'm focusing on, you know, mechanics or, you know, some kind of, you know, engines or things like that. This might be, you know, a targeted audience that I would like to, you know, go after. So this first one here, let's go ahead and click on it and see if it meets our criteria. So as we see, they kind of have a lot of views, 260,000 views. That's really good. And we see that there is absolutely no link in this description. All it says is leaving your oil changes to teenagers at the gas station. Never again. Watch this video and learn how to do it yourself. All right, so this is great. They are not taking advantage at all of these 260,000 views they've received. Now, to look at the statistics to see if this is trending upwards, we can click on the more option here. And then we're going to click on statistics.